Well, what about you? Mercedes-Benz A-Class A180, pretty fresh one this here. And uh, yeah, not a big lot wrong with it, to be honest with you. Just gonna stick a set of brake pads in it. Okay, first up, we're gonna release this sensor wire, uh, that wee bit. This is that's a brake pad wire indicator. Uh, so normally it marks, yeah, there's only one per side, and uh, it's usually on the driver's side. So with that, I'll just buzz these off. Do the bottom one. Swap hands. <laughs> Easy. So it's 17 mil there, and that's uh, 13 mil there. And our caliber. So just keep the weight of the caliber in your hand. Uh, get her up to the top. There. Get her hooked up on the spring some way. There we go. So you don't want to put any tension on the uh, on the brake hose. So they're pretty well stuck in there. But that's okay. So I'll just buzz this carrier bracket off. On the off. So they're uh, torques. So that's a, an E18 torx head there. So we're carrier bracket in the vase, so we're just gonna tappy tap tap. Get these out. So that's them there. A wee bit left on them. Not a big lot, so uh, yeah, I recommended the the owner uh, are going to need that, so we need to dress all that up, give this these wee bit of grease. They're nice and free anyway, but we'll give them a wee bit of grease. But the main thing is getting these cleaned up so they don't uh, so they don't jam up in the future. So before we do that, uh, just a wee thing to note here is when you take a brake pad out, it's good. Well, what I do anyway, it's good to note where the actual pad was touching. The carrier bracket so it's been touching there and it's been touching there so we need to make sure those faces are lovely and clean and uh, the spring just makes its way so a lot of people concentrate on the on the bottom recess but a lot of times the pad isn't touching there at all it's there and there so uh, those points there we need to make sure they're nice and clean so that it doesn't jam you could use an ordinary wire brush and a, and a fail or something like that, but what I, I use a bit of air power, so may as well let that do the work for me. <laughs> so that's the face there where the pad touches, so that's when I need to make sure it's nice and clean. I may actually give it a fail as well. <laughs> Make 
sure you're getting into the corners there. So with that nice and clean there, you can see you want it sort of down to the base metal. Uh, so if you have to, if it's really bad, you give it a wee rub of fail, especially in the places where the, the pad is touching. So we'll have a wee look at these. These are nice and free, but uh, we'll give them a wee grease anyway. So we'll pull them out, give them a wee wipe. Now, the other thing I like to do is see if this area here is rusty. See if it's rusty around there. You want to give that a, a buzz with a wire wheel as well. These aren't too bad. And similarly then, in here as well. So I like to give that, that a bit of grease, that a bit of grease, and uh, we'll get our slider pin out. Some of these slider pins have wee rubbers in them, which are anti-rattle. Uh, so we don't want to put any petroleum-based grease in against the rubber, because it will make the rubber swell. So I like to use silicone grease. You can, well, you can't see that. You can't see that tin, but it's uh, red stuff. So not too much on this, and you don't want to put it on the end. You want to put it around the shank. So I have heard, I have heard, it hasn't happened to me, but I have heard people putting a load of grease in and, and shoving it in, and the grease ends up in the end there, and the brakes heat up and uh, the pin expands and actually locks the brakes on. So I've heard of that happening. I haven't actually uh, witnessed it or myself, but I've heard of that happening in the trade, you know. So we get a bit of grease down there, a wee bit of grease down there, just not too much, don't need a plaster. And uh, so that rubber will be a nice good contact there. And Similarly here, and we'll do the other one. So two minutes does this, two minutes, and uh, you know that the thing's gonna be right. And even though they were free there, we still re-grease them. Because people, a lot of people, they just, uh, they just see, oh, they're free and they're dead on, we'll just uh, leave it the way it is. So we better grease in or in there. Not too much. Don't need a plaster. So less is more. Less is more. And that's that. So another thing I like to do, and this is to sort of prevent these, these surfaces from rusting up, is a wee tiny wee smear of copper grease. And you want to put a wee bit of copper grease on the, uh, just, you know, the contact surfaces. So it's where the pad contacts the metal. So that assists with... Uh, it, it stops them from them those surfaces from from rusting and uh, corroding up. Now, a lot of people say, well, the grease just attracts dirt and uh, it, it sticks to it. And after a few dry cycles, you know, the grease melts and, and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it it's a bit of you know, do you do it? Do you not do it? And uh, I like to do it. It's in my habit to do it, and uh, it's commonplace. But the thing about it is, uh, guys, is you don't it like I've just sort of uh, you know coloured that with the grease. You don't plaster it all over the place. You definitely don't plaster because it it'll just get on your disc and it'll just you know you don't, you don't want that. That'll ruin your you know the surface of the pad uh, as well. So there's just a just a smear as is, is all it needs. It's just to, to colour it really you know. So uh, not much at all on that. Right, so just before we put the, we're going to put the pads into the caliber and then put our caliber carrier and then put the carrier on the desk. And you may notice I've washed my hands. Well, I've sort of washed my hands when uh, I'm going to handle these. So what we want to do is obviously you get the, you know, get the old pads out and compare them and make sure you have the right pad. So just then compare the, to see if they're the same. And there they look good. There's another uh, variant of this particular car. And it takes these pads, uh, which are visibly smaller. So uh, same sort of style with the clips on the ends there. Uh, so the hardware is with them. But there's, there's a thing to note about these ones. And I'm not taking out of these cellophane because these are going to be a return. Right? So there's a chamfer here. And there's no chamfer here. You see that square? That there square. So these are directional. These are directional brake pads. 
So the chamfer goes on the leading edge. So if you imagine the disc's rotating, uh, you know, for the car moving forward, you want that chamfer for where the disc comes down. So for where the disc comes down, that's the that's the orientation now. So you can put them in the wrong way, and what'll happen is that it'll squeal like crazy until that chamfer sort of wears down a bit. Now you may notice as well this particular style of pad, this green stripe. You might say, what the hell is that green stripe for? And it's on the new ones there as well. So that that is a bedding in uh, layer that 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 helps the the pad bed bed in very very quickly. So. Okay, are we thing to note uh, these pads, these ones here that are for the car, come with new, new bolts with thread locker on them, so we're going to use them. And the other thing you may notice is wear indicator. You do not normally get the wear indicator with any mega pads that, that I've ever seen, so you have to buy that separately. They don't even think about reusing that. Now, this, this wear indicator wasn't flagging on the car, but you can maybe see there that the, there's a wee, lip, a wee tiny lip in the disc. We're not going to change the disc in this, at this time in this car. They're not too bad. There's a wee tiny wee lip, but it's not too bad. And it's ready. It's just about eating in to that wear sensor there. So that, so that uh, wear indicator was ready to pop a warning onto the dash. So we can't use that. Normally with the heat and all, if you try to take these out, that wee spud there breaks off. So we'll just show you a new wear sensor. So say you have to buy the new wear sensor separately. They don't come with the pads. They never do. Uh, uh, not with the makes that I buy anyway. And uh, there's it there. It's only a few pounds and you just have to know to, to replace them. As I say, even if the, the warning light isn't on for the change of pads, you, you need to replace that anyway. Because that wee, that wee plastic thing there, that'll snap on you. So And uh, it'll, not, it'll not sit in very well because that wee spring will be all heated up. It's gone through heat cycles and all that sort of jazz. Only a few quid, and uh, it's it's part of the job, you know. So a lot of people, you know, they probably change pads in cars, and they do it, you know, they don't take the carrier off, and they don't clean it up, or they just wire brush it on the car, and uh, they say, well, that'll, that'll do, because, you know, they're on time, people don't want to pay the money, they, they, you know, there's, there's extra time in doing what I'm doing here, and that's, you know, you charge accordingly for that, uh, there's a lot of guys and they just bait the old set out and bait the new set in and that's it, where you go. You're going to have problems if you do that. Now, I'll just show you a wee thing here with this particular stay. So if you try to put that pad in from the outside, you see the wee spring clips? Well, that won't let you, that won't let you do it. You, probably, you maybe could get it in, but you're going to struggle to get it in because they're pointing that way. These pads have to go in from the inside out, if that makes sense. So that's not done too far. So how long I can see if I can do this here. So nice and there we go, getting them lined up. So they ha they have to go in from the from the that way from the inside out. So if you're going to bait these in, you're going to expand that spring there. Uh, you know you you might get them in by holding that in or whatever, but th this is this is the way to do it. So you put you put your pads on with uh, with the carrier. So the pad material obviously goes the inside and uh, the friction material. So from the inside, uh, just nice and gently in. So otherwise it pops, it just pops out the other side there. So there we go. And they're nice and free. They'll nice slide about with my fingertips. So that's what you want. You want the, t the pads to be able to slide about with your fingertips. So that carrier is gonna go in uh, assembled. Okay, we're going to take a brake fluid cap off here now and uh, just set it aside there. I'll just set it, I'll set it there. And take a wee mental note. Now, this, this here appears to be, it's just below, it's just below the maximum there. So when we push these pistons in, there's a good chance that'll, over, that'll overflow. So we just need to keep an eye on that. Right, so I've got a rag over the disc and uh, we're just going to unhook this and we're going to set it on the desk making sure it's not going to fall so we just need to make sure that's, that's okay and we're going to put the old pad in here and just get a c clamp and 
There's a Mercedes Benz thing here, but it should be all right. We'll be able to press it in all right. So there, there's other tools you can do to press this in here. And uh, I'm using this C-clamp here because there's a nice flat face on the on the back of the, the caliper. And this one, and while I'm doing this, I'm keeping an eye on the brake fluid level. So we're just going to put this right in. Once it, in, once it starts to move, it, it goes in nicely, nice and gently. You don't need to horse it in, you know, so. And that's, that's it. So you just feel it stopping. Get that out of the way. Just keep our keep a wee finger on our caliper so it doesn't fall. Okay, so that's a piston nicely in there. And uh, you know, rubber's in good neck and stuff. So we're just going to give this a wee quick clean up. Here, I'm not chopping any wires there, I'm not chopping that wee wire either. Right, so that sits there for a second. So I'm going to use a combination of two wire brushes, a stiff brush and a soft brush. So the stiff brush is going to uh, take it all off for me, uh, all the, the, the bad stuff, and we'll give it a bit of that. Give it a blow of the airline and scoot a brake cleaner on. So this is what the rag's for. This is to stop contaminating the uh, brake disc. So, I'll give that a key dig. Go in there with a stiff brush. And it's just to take the friction material off. If this is exceptionally bad, you need to really, really give this a good going over. But it's just to get rid of all the, all the dust. This isn't too bad here. It's just to get rid of all the dust. And we're soft brush then. Yeah. We can get the most of that out. So you get the idea there. And we're gonna give it a blast here. Jabbers. So that's what the rags for. And then a scoop with a brake cleaner. So with, with calibers and stuff like that, I use the stuff in a tin because there's a wee bit of power behind it, you know? So we're giving that just a, a going over. So I'll let that run down onto the rag. And you don't need to go crazy with it. You see people going mad with brake cleaner using a full tin on that. And it's just to give it a bit of a soaking. I'll give it a bit of dry off. I don't like brake clean uh, sitting on the rubber too long, so in case it sort of starts to dissolve it a bit. So there we go. So this surface here, if this was cruddy, uh, you want to give this a wee rub with, with a bit of emery paper. And yeah, it's not too bad. And in here, so the, this surface here, this back side of the surface, again, just a smear of some sort of anti seize or copper grease. And it's just, you're just colouring it, not all over the place. And what I like to do is a wee fine run around. So anywhere where there's metal to metal contact, it just gives that wee, uh, you know, a wee membrane of, uh, of grease. So just a smear. Don't go mad with the grease. So we'll offer up our assembled carrier bracket and to I need to tease the pads out slightly. It looks up. There we go. So just squeeze in there or something, falling out, falling out. So you don't want to buzz these up. You can buzz them up the way, but you need to get definitely need to get them uh, get them started with a couple of threads. I'm just going to run them up with a ratchet. Okay, so it shouldn't take too much. So there are female torques here. We're just gonna run these up. Now, clearly, you know, a rookie mistake is you put one bolt in and, and tighten it up or get it sort of a wee bit tight and then you can't get the bottom one in or you try to tighten that up and it actually swings the carrier up. So you want to bring these in 
sort of evenly. It's not really crucial, but you get them in uh, nice and evenly. Now regarding torque, I'm just going to put, you know, a good bit of force on it. Just put a bit of weight on it. You don't need to swing on them. Uh, there are certain makes, Honda especially, where they're a devil for stripping the threads in here if you if you go mad on them because the bolt, it's only a wee small bolt. So I'm gonna, they're, they're nicely in there and I'm just gonna give them a wee, a wee uh, pull on the ratchet. You're t probably talking around 78 meters, something like that. Okay, here we go. That's it, I'm happy with that. Right, so just gonna, so we know these here move nice and freely with your, with your hands, so I'm just gonna give that a squeeze in and uh, bring our car, uh, caliber down. So just be, keep a note on the uh, the brake hose. You, you don't twist the brake hose when you bring this down, that you don't put the brake hose on or put any sort of kinks or twists on it. And you need to just pull these out and that'll sit nicely there for us. You get the bolts in. So our new bolts uh, that came with the pads have thread locker on them. So that's dead on. If the, you don't get new bolts with it, give the threads a clean, we taste the thread locker. It's all you need to do. And I'm happy enough to reuse bolts. So you reuse your bolts all the time, but if, if there's new ones with the pads, you stick them in. So to get this, you want to do this with your, with your fingers, first of all. So you might have to slide this up and down and orientate it. You see what? Come in there, and you'll get the first few threads there until it hits the thread locker. So I'll just do the same with the other one. So there's about three threads there, and then you're on the thread locker. So you just take the weight of the of the the caliper off the the bolt. So these are 13 mil, they're the same size as what's before. So now we're on the thread locker. It's spinning this boy here, this inner bit. So you just hold it now. Cheap spanners, uh, guys, cheap spanners tend to be very wide at the top. So you might think wide is good, there's more meat to catch the nut. But uh, good quality spanners are, are a bit thinner because they don't need to be wide. <laughs> and uh, that's what I've found anyway. So that spanner's a, a tang, tang tools. I quite like them. And I'm just spinning, spinning this up in here. So... So that doesn't turn anymore so we'll just give that we nip up don't have to swing on it you don't have to swing on anything cars so that's nice so while we're here we'll just remember to click on our brake pad wear indicator sending wire uh, we'll put this bio here in so as we can see the hole is there so it's going to go in like so, hopefully. You're going to go in there. Just a wee click, that's it. And then, uh, let me see. That can go in any orientation at all. It actually goes in that way. So, that's it then. And we'll just get the wire so that it's not touching, you don't want that touching the desk. So the wire will wear out. So, there we go. So, that's that say done. So, before we finish up uh, on this side, obviously I have to do the other side, like, but I'm, I'm not gonna fill in the other side, it's gonna be exactly the same. I'm just gonna put, uh, this is, is nice and shiny. Now, if that's corroded, get the wire wheel, just run the wire wheel around that. This is nice and shiny, I'm not gonna run the wire wheel around it but I am going to smear a bit of copper grease. Now, what that does, and you don't want to get any in the threads, actually, by the way, either. So just a wee smear round, round up. So if your car's got alloys on it, your aluminium, that's where it sticks. It sticks there. People think it sticks to these faces here and you plaster that all over the place. It's just that wee, wee, wee ridge there that you want to do so the, the punter can get the wheels off. Nice and easy the next time. So that was completely uh, dry there. So any car that I do 
you know, take the wheels off after a while, you know, comes back for something else and uh, you take the wheels off, the, the wheels just come off, no problem. These wheels here, they're, they're Mercedes, any car at all, with aluminium on that steel, that, the aluminium uh, reacts. Uh, you get that sort of white powdery stuff, I'm sure you've seen before, and that thing locks on. So uh, if you get a puncture at the side of the road and you want to change the tyres, you need to fit them uh, pry bar to get the wheel off. So that's why I do that. That's just a wee additional thing. I have to remember to take our, our hook off the spring. And what else is there to tell you? Oh yes, right, okay. What do you want to do before you now proceed to the other side, which is I'm about to do, is check this brake fluid level. So as you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that, it's uh, it's come up into the knacker right bit. So when I uh, go to press that alone, that'll probably come right up. So you either pull a wee bit out of that with a syringe or something, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open the driver's door and push these pads in with the brake pedal. So that, that'll uh, that'll take that down a wee bit again, but uh, just keep it um, keep an eye on that because it's whenever you do the second one, uh, that'll that'll run the danger overflowing. So you don't want to get the brake fluid all over all over the, the components and over the chassis and stuff like that. So that's why we do that. The other wee thing is uh, the reason why I take the lid off is uh, just so the brake fluid has no resistance; it can travel back up. And uh, but however, uh, usually on these caps there is a vent hole, uh, there's a tiny, tiny wee hole somewhere, usually, so that the, the brake fluid can, uh, you know, can go down. So uh, if, if that was totally sealed, it'll, it'll uh, you know, it'll create like a vacuum and it'll, it'll not want to drop. So, but it, it's minute, there's a wee tiny, tiny vent hole and it's usually somewhere, and I can't actually, in this one here, I can't actually see a vent hole at all. So it's uh, sealed with, with uh, a rubber cap there. Oh yeah, well there's, you see the way that's spinning inside it there? So there, there's some sort of wee vent, it's maybe internally vented uh, in some way with that. So usually uh, if there's just a rubber seal in that, there might be a wee tiny wee pinhole. But anyway, that's the reason why we take the, uh, that's the reason why we take that lid off, so that there's nothing impeding the brake fluid from coming back on. So I'm just gonna take it down here again. I'm just gonna push everything out of the my feet. So, okay, uh, many thanks for watching. That's a wee quick brake job done properly. Uh, trip over everything here. And uh, there we go. Pretty fresh Mercedes-Benz. So, many thanks for watching. Hope that helped you. Uh, do your brake pads correctly. Don't just bait them out, bait them in. You're gonna have problems. So uh, all the best. Oh, here before we go, just to sit, just I didn't mention those brake pads there in particular. Uh, I couldn't see a different size of chamfer on them, and sometimes you, there's a wee arrow on it that indicates the direction. Those brake pads there were all the same, so uh, I deemed them as not being directional. So uh, I didn't didn't pay any. Uh, yeah, need to look at them first before we put them in, and and deem whether directional or not. The ones I showed you in, on the bench there are definitely directional because there's a chamfer on one side and there's none on the other side. It's flat, so they need to go in a certain orientation. These ones here, uh, it didn't, it didn't. There was no indication that there was any, any, any particular way they went in. So, right, sorry for that. Thanks for watching. All the best. Bye bye.